The main river basins of the world transcend national borders, and the needs of their waters have sparked international conflicts throughout the world. Millions of years ago, great civilizations in the history of humanity emerged around the great rivers. Whole villages have developed around and according to their waters. Others have not survived. The rivers are synonymous with power, being able to have something to drink, to eat, and how to transport goods and people. And on many occasions, the survival of a, nation, of a nation depends on the power and just by the power that it gives a great mass of fresh water, such as the Tigris and Euphrates. It is now like a weapon for different cultures and diversities united by legendary waters. The great Ethiopian dam, new war over water, water and geopolitical change of the Nile. This is what we're going to be analyzing today. We'll have more information. We'll speak to guests. And as always, we, ha we always count on your critical thinking. Let's begin. The hyper-nationalist phrases and the exchange of threats and war tone between 2011 and 2017, the leaders of Ethiopia and Egypt brought forth the conflict over the waters of the Nile about the interests of Ethiopia to erect a colossal hydroelectric plant there. Egypt urged to sabotage the construction. The media supported its proposal and even anticipated a possible war and confrontation by alluding to military capabilities of each one. There was recently an approach that was able to lower the tone. Uh, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Abiy Ahmed, visited Cairo in June 2018 and promised not to cause damage. Shortly before, in January the same year, of the same year, the President of Egypt and Prime Minister of the time, Hal Marim de Salim, met in the same spirit. Let's listen. Egypt firmly believes in the right of Ethiopia and all countries of the world to develop. And I explained that the Nile Basin has enormous resources and great potential, which makes it a source of cooperation, construction and development, and not a source of conflict, especially in the presence of opportunities of cooperation in the fields of electricity, agriculture, industry and investment. The Nile offers and must always provide an opportunity for cooperation, and we have agreed that we must ensure that this great river never becomes a source of competition, distrust, or conflict. Today, we're going to study about the great dam of the Ethiopian Renaissance. Let's see where it is and other information. The Great Dam of Ethiopian Resonance, or GERD, for its acronym in English, it is defined as the largest hydroelectric project in the African continent, is developed by the government of Ethiopia. It is built in the region state of Benishangul, Jumus, one of the ninth ethnic divisions of the country of Horn of Africa, exactly on the Blue Nile. It is just a few kilometers from the border in the northern region of country of adjacent to Egypt, but and 2,000, 2.5 thousand kilometers from Cairo. The dam consists of a reservoir and hydroelectric power station. The reservoir will be three times larger than the Lake Constanza, which is in Central Europe and is about 63 kilometers long, surrounded by Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. The hydroelectric plant will generate little more than 6,000 megawatts of energy, enough to supply all Ethiopia and even export to neighboring countries, just what Ethiopia has proposed from the beginning. Its capability is important but smaller than its similar one in Itaipu between Brazil and Paraguay, or the Three Gorges in China. The Ethiopian state conceives it as a flag job and imperative. And imperative. It is symbol of the national resonance, resonance, resonance hence its name and ge geopolitical relevance of the first order. It means that it might be a reordering of geopoliticals in the region, since it's one of the most important rivers, the Nile. The tension towers already in places waiting for for the start of a new energy transmission. It's about to cost a lot of million dollars, and Ethiopia will take over all of the all of the costs to avoid any type of restrictions of any banks or any other neighboring. What they thought of how to get the money is to convince people to pay for it. 
through the national lottery. And there was also going to be people, civil servants, that were going to voluntarily give up their their salaries. Then oh, when there was a recession, Ethiopia had to take over some money from Ethiopia, Europe and China that also gave a billion dollars for transmission lines. Let's see, in the times of pharaohs, it was, re it was revered as a supreme god. It is a geographic element of immense symbolism, drains the southwestern end of Mediterranean Sea. From the Greeks to the Malmuks uh, have wanted to control their waters. The long territory it occupies for Euro Egypt has a special significance. Without it, its pyramids would have not existed. It is a fundamental to the flourishing of civilizations of ancient Egypt. Herod said, Egypt is a gift from the Nile. River Nile is the greatest one in Europe. It goes through 6,000 kilometers. It covers 6,000. Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, Tanzania, Kenya, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, and Egypt. All of these it provides fresh water and fertile lands for agriculture. There are two branches, White Nile that begins in Burundi and flows to the lakes of East Africa. From this, there's 14% of the waters that go through the river basin. In the parallel, there's another branch, the Blue Nile, that begins in the Ethiopia and it and is a resource of 80% of the water resources. The cataracts of Blue Nile are the second biggest in Africa. This river is so important that without its waters and without the food it provides, Egypt and Sudan would not be able to survive. The Nile is a factor of stability of the whole area. Historically, Egypt has had all of the influence over the river. And it's always been, his, its history has always been marked by the river. But the new, the new news of this hydroelectric construction is a threat for their sovereignty. Let's go to web pages. Foreign Policy Studies of March 22 says, Saving Distance in the Conflict Over the Waters of the Nile. It says, it is essential to reduce mistrust between the three governments involved. For example, Prime, the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed should invite his Egyptian and Sudanese counterparts to learn firsthand about the construction that would be a manifestation of goodwill in demonstrating that it would take into account all the concerns especially of the two neighbors. Uh, Ethiopia could also give Egypt sufficient room for maneuver to activate improvements in its water resource management systems, and in return it could commit itself not to provide support to armed opposition groups that could boycott the development of this project. Let's go to another website that's called The World Order of November 13, 2015. It says, Geopolitics of the Nile, the war for the throne of the Pharaoh. And it, I've paraphrased. In the first paragraphs, uh, it says, that is Daniel Rosselló, graduado en Relaciones Internacionales. The author is Daniel Rosero. Egypt is physically dependent on the waters of the Nile, but even more so on the colonial history burned in the imagination of its inhabitants, the conception of the river as a right birth. As legitimate national property, the modern state in the 19th century was shaped by this idea and even developed agriculture and industrial revolution that resulted in most total control over the waters through the irrigation systems, channels, and dams. Sudan and Ethiopia were denied the possibility of constructing dams or any engineering works that could change the channel. Thus, Egypt was the only actor able to modify and manage the dynamics of the river according to its needs and without the consent of the rest of the nations of the basin as Ethiopia and Sudan. And Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, and Tanzania were also excluded from any possibility of decision making. 
que se trata del As I told you, de I'm paraphrasing from the first part of, the, of this article. Let's go to rebellion.org of December 31st, 2018. It says, the great dam uh, of the rebirth of the Ethiopia will restruct the complex water policy of the Nile Basin, mainly harming Egypt. This is written by Kieran Cook, a foreign correspondent for the BBC and Financial Times, and continues to collaborate with BBC and several international newspapers and radio stations. At the point, at one point, Egyptian poli politicians spoke of bombarding GERD to preserve what they consider their historical right to the water of the river. No one can touch the part of the water or of the Nile that corresponds to Egypt, affirmed the Egyptian president Abdel Fattah El Sisi last November. It is a matter of life and death. This is our country, and water must be guaranteed to our citizens from Aswan to Alexandria. However, despite all these strong words, Cairo knows that the GERD will become a reality in the near future. The project will involve a profound change of the power in the Nile Basin, say those who have followed it closely. And uh, this is what we're going to be talking about today, to decipher today. And let's talk to our first guest, Nayara Tardo from Egypt is going to be our first guest. How are you, Nayara? Uh, nice to greet you. Great day for you and your entire TV audience at this hour. Indeed, as I reviewed some material for this report, I found criteria of some analysts of the region and these topics specifically, and many agreed that the idea that while the geopolitical conflicts of the second half of the 20th century have had as a background the energy resources for some years, are numer there are numer numerous voices that have forecasted that this serious role play by the water in the conflicts of the new century, and especially in the region of Africa and the Middle East, beyond the religious and cultural reasons that are behind these conflicts. Water has been a continuous conflict between the different nations that have inhabited the region precisely because of the historic places that, or that have the origin of the civilization in the region between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, known as Mesopotamia. The current Iraq. The Rebirth Dam is precisely the largest hydroelectric project in the entire African continent. A dam under construction in Ethiopia on the Blue Nile, which is one of the branches of the River Nile. And it is a, it is a project that has provoked differences between Ethiopia and Egypt and Sudan, which may begin, which may be, Ethiopia might be the largest supplier of energy. So Egypt feels that they're threatened because of the lessening of water, which is their main resources of water. Ethiopia says this will not be so, and on the contrary, they push forward this project. And this is where there are some differences between these two countries that may end up as a conflict conflict, because the Egyptians have always said that any threat to the water of their country, of their country is a threat to their sovereignty. Let's not forget that the River Nile is a symbol for the Egyptian, because the, their civilization began at the, at the river coast of, of the Nile. On the other side, uh, there are differences on how much Sudan can use of this water and Ethiopia can use. So there is a dispute that confronts three countries and how to use the waters of the River Nile which is considered one of the longest ones in the world. In June of this year, the Ethiopian minister asked to increase negotiation on, the, on this controversial dam that is being constructed by Ethiopia. These negotiations were blocked for several months because of this disagreement of the impact that might this hydroelectric plant might have over the Nile. The project was to be finished 
in the 2020, but the Prime Minister of Ethiopia said that it would have uh, some years uh, more due to these contradictions and, and disagreements between the countries. An analyst uh, here said that, that the first war caused by water might be might begin here at the Nile so there will be there's a need to find agreements between Ethiopia Egypt and Sudan thank you very much for all of the information well according to Ethiopia it will benefit their country but of course it will have important repercussions on two neighboring countries and if we analyze what each country says and what we're going to be analyzing when we come back in our second part we ask ourselves do you think it, it might change the geopolitical scheme especially in a in a region that is marked by water uh, due to their history and their economy so would this be a an opportunity or a crisis to find uh, new conjunctions we'll analyze this after our first pause please stay with us Great Renaissance, Great Dam, will it reconfigure the regional geopolitics? As we expect, this is a conflict on three sides, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt, because Ethiopia wants to construct a hydroelectric plant on the Blue Nile. Let's uh, identify each one of the actors. The biggest opposer to the construction of this dam is Egypt because it has some scarce production of water and the resources are not well managed. According to the United Nations, in 2025, it might be left without water. Last November, the president, al khatat el-Sisi, says that it's a matter of life and death. Egypt says that the creation of this hydroelectric, hydroelectric area would reduce the water that they receive. This might, mean, this might lead to a 20% reduction of water production in their part of the, of the river. Egypt depends on 90% of the water from the Nile for their water, for their water resources. On their behalf, Ethiopia says that they will continue because it will become, it will make them have all of the resource of energy and be also able to export. Ethiopia is also dependent on their oil production. However, they, they, both countries depend on this country, on the, on the water for electric resources. Sudan supports, supports the, the construction because it thinks that it might also benefit them. But Sudan and the Ethiopia relationships, there are also tense. Sudan had a good, a good action to resolve their internal problems. Let's locate where this, where we can find this Renaissance dam. As we said, Egypt is worried of all of the water flow that they receive because they depend on the water and the sovereignty is also at risk. Para que lo tengamos allí muy presente. 
The government says that if there's a construction or modifying the course of the river would leave lots of people without work, especially everybody who does agriculture. Ethiopia and Sudan reivindicate their sovereignty over the waters too. Let's see, Ethiopia in the Horn of Africa, on the top Sudan, and over Sudan there's Egypt. These are the three great actors. Let's analyze. Let's go with our first guest. He is Carlos Martinez. He's an international analyst, and he's, he works for several media outlets. He's from Spain. Uh, do you see that there's a possibility for conflict? Hi, good afternoon. Well, there is a lot of possibility of, a, of conflicts, especially Egypt uh, has thousands of years of practicing an agriculture that depends on the water source of the Nile. And of course, the water flow will decrease due to the Ethiopian dam that is being constructed. What will happen is that there should, there, everybody should respect the international agreement of 2018 regarding the use of this dam that will not affect the course and the flow of the river. Uh, however, uh, normally the agreements are not fulfilled. Of course, Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world, and they need development, but they cannot do that on the backs of hurting other countries. So there are restrictions that should be put into place. This will be only be able to done when all of the countries respect the international agreements, especially with a, such a fragile system as the Nile, and that also has historic implication. Let's see, there's a, there's a publication of the War for the Throne of the Pharaoh. This is an article of Daniel Rosselló that doesn't say that it's only the physical dependency on the waters of the Nile. I'm speaking about Egypt, but also because of the, of the history that it means for their citizens, because they think it's a birthright. And this also marks the importance of the Nile for these people. Well, in fact, the geopolitics is very important because we're speaking of a natural resources, a resource that affects several countries. In this case, it's very practical because up until now, Egypt uh, lived happy with, the, with all of the overflowing sometimes of the Nile. Let's not forget that the first dam that was built on the Nile was the Egyptian one. What happens is that apparently for the Egyptian people is not the same to have to have the control, total control of the water, although the dam will be further down. Because let's not forget that there has been lots of instability politically in this country. So they need to be able to solve this conflict. And although the dam is in Ethiopian lands, Egypt does not want to give up the sovereignty over all of the water of the Nile. 
de Egipto. Hay que recordar que si Let's not forget that Ethiopia, in fact, is very is very poor. Sudan is also poor, and they they have been affected by wars. And this and the war in Sudan has also been pushed by foreign countries. Thank you very much, Carlos. Um, what is your opinion? I want to talk to Joslan Silverio Gonzalez. He's an international analyst from Cuba. Good afternoon, Joslan. He's joining us from Havana. Apparently, everything boils down to the division of the waters. Of course, this is a. This depends on the on the relevance of the water. Greetings, Lucia. In fact, this is a conflict that up until now is just being discussed in the diplomatic fields in between these two countries that are regional powers, and they are Egypt and Ethiopia. It's also important to see that, of course, the Nile has been a very important factor for all of these countries. Countries. And what we're speaking of now is the, of the distribution of these waters that has been very important historically for the Egyptian civilization. Additionally, we cannot forget that with this new dam, uh, the be built by Ethiopia, Egypt will lose the control of the water because 85% of the water that fills up the valley of Ethiopia starts in Egypt. So there is a great debate on the repercussions, even the environmental repercussions that this, that this dam might have. Uh, one of the biggest problems problems is how much time it will take to fill the dam and how it will affect the water's river down. Because if the levels lower, what would, have, what would be the impact of the Egyptian agriculture? There's another important factor, that's the demography. Egypt has 99 million people, and Ethiopia is 108 million people. And apparently for 2058, the projection is that it will grow. So there will be more demand of food and fresh water. So this, is a, this causes all of the misunderstandings. According to Egypt, there's an institution that says that the country will need tw 21 billion square kilometers of water additionally to the ones that they have now to be able to satisfy the needs of the Egyptian people that by then that by will be 150, billion, 150 million people in 30 years. So, of course, there's great pressure of the people that live in the surrounding river basin. If we also see the Egyptian population, almost 95% receives water from the River Nile. So there will be an affection to the agriculture. So this is a national security issue. In the case of Ethiopia, it would be interesting to analyze that has that it has a 7 to 10 percent economic growth and it's affected by all of the droughts and this has led people to be in food insecurity, that there's not enough. This happens, too, to Somalia. So it's very important to have a good 
water regulations to ensure the food supply. Well, for Ethiopia, Ethiopia says that this dam will come and make the people feel better because they have been refused all the rights. Ethiopia in the past we had no opportunity, not even Sudan, to have any engineering works just like Egypt did. Egypt uh, considers the river as their own. Own, and will, is not willing to share. Do you think there is a possibility of establishing peace with this conflict? Well, in fact, up until now, the contradictions are political and on the diplomacy field. I hope that this doesn't go to the military front. They're both countries that are allied to the Western countries. Uh, so how could this be solved if it's not, if it's not by a, a, a peaceful resolution that is done by dialogue? Without a doubt, the topic, the construction of the Renaissance Great Dam will be very important for this country that every year needs more energy supply. Only 35% of the Ethiopian people have electricity, so this dam would increase the amount of people with electricity. So in the economic field also, this would allow Ethiopia export energy to the bordering countries. It is said that when, when the dam is at peak, it will be able to produce export energy. Part of the infrastructure is uh, to allow this exportation is already being built. Egypt is a country that has also had a has also had an increase in the demand of electricity. But of course, Egypt also has petroleum. This will obviously change the geopolitics along these countries, and it could make the contradictions even bigger. Egypt, ever since the Arab Spring, when Hosni Mubarak was ousted, they have lived in stability on the political field. And this year, there was a division with Sudan and South Sudan. So there's a new regional actor to negotiate with. South Sudan, ever since it was independent, is submerged in a civil war. So it is in a, in a weaker situation to negotiate on the waters of the Nile. Sudan, after the coup d'etat, is also in a, a complicated situation. So in the context, the regional context could become more complex should these contradictions between Egypt and Ethiopia are not solved in the multilateral discussion. Thank you very much, Professor Joslan. Let's speak about the politics aspect, of the, the political aspects of this. Just a couple of hours ago, the, gov the Sudanese government said that they have, they, they're, still, they're still in regional conflicts inside their lands. 
tense más el panorama, eh, incluso lo interno en cada país. Vuelvo con el profesor Let Carlos. Let me go back to Gracias, profesor Carlos. Gracias, si me quedo un minutito, voy a regresar con usted y le pregunto eh, a Carlos I want to si ask you if que pueda haberse you think considerablemente la geopolítica that the geopolitics of the Nile have considerably been changed. Especialmente el foco en Europa. Well, obviously, with the construction of this dam, Ethiopia gains all of the power. And Europe, as always, who also takes place in any type of conflict, now we have to see which country aligns with uh, Egypt and Ethiopia. Sudan is left out because they did not uh, doubt in making business with the Chinese companies. And, however, this has not implied any, any betterment in the quality of life of their people. Ethiopia also has a, their own conflicts, internal conflicts. If you see the neighboring Yemen and Syria, and now he's playing of all of this very fragile balance. So I think there is a diplomatic conflict, and uh, of course there is a, 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 a politic aspect to all of this. And it's, we cannot see what are the alliances that are going to be established. So it's highly probable that this conflict uh, increases. Thank you very much for both of our guests. Now we're going from the particular to the general aspects of what's going on in Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan. Many analysts are speaking of a probable war over water when they say like in the last century there were war conflicts for the oil. Maybe this could happen with water that is so fundamental for the life of these countries. So let's see the heavy load that these resources have and the geopolitical re uh, relevance. Let's go to a pause. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Great Ethiopian Residence Dam. Let's continue analyzing this. In 1995, the vice president of the World Bank said, said that if these um, the wars in this century were of petroleum, the ones of next century will be of water, over water. Pope Francis in 2017 said, I am worried of the coming of a great war over water. Analysts say that the water will be the motive for the next wars, just like the oil was for the previous centuries. It has been identified that the centers of a biggest threat would be the River Nile, the occupation, the occupation of the Palestinian people is of trying to have access, to have more resources, water, oil, and they could have access to the, to the river in the proximity. Israel has to give the license to be able to have effect over these rivers. Turkey, Iraq also has a 
dispute over the Euphrates. Atatürk is a great dam, has been a great point of discussion. Middle East also has tensions because all of the water is concentrated in three rivers. All of their waters, Jordan, Euphrates, and Tigris. In March, there was also there was almost a war between Mozambique and Zimbabwe due to the water over another river in their locality. Let's continue with the analysis with Luis Paz. He's an international analyst. How are you? Many, many say that the unequal distribution of water on a worldwide scale, as we see there's all the time there's less water, and the poor uh, work of all of the governments have led to maybe a conflict. How do you see this? In fact, from the year 2000 with the World Forum, when they said that the next wars would be over water, this was not a, a war without foundation. Of course, this, this was covered first uh, over the Cold War with the U.S. and the USSR, since there were some ideological differences, it, the war over water was not clear. However, as we saw in Bolivia, there was this first war over this first dispute how a country is trying to have access to water. This will give you an idea on how this might escalate. In the case of the Renaissance Dam, we find uh, some difficulties. In 1959, there was an agreement between Egypt and Zimbabwe that was going to be there were going to be more countries that demanded control over water. The agreement did have some shortcomings. That did affect other countries, uh, especially where the river white, the white Nile begins. Obviously, when Ethiopia announces the creation of this Renaissance Great Dam, there was lots of concern because uh, Egypt will feel a diminution, a diminishing in the flow. Obviously, this creates lots of problems because Egypt has greater military capacity. And this has made that other countries back down on their in, intention of making dams. Ethiopia has grown. However, at the moment of building this dam, when it does this, uh, they will have a, a stronger weight in the international field. There is a dispute for power within the region that goes beyond the water, but it, it does influence. In the case of the Jordan River and the Tigris Euphrates, there are also confrontations, but there are confrontations at different levels. In the case of the River Jordan, there are two historical moments. The first was the rivalry over the control of the Yarmu River and the part that goes to the Jordan River. 
And the other one was between uh, Israel and the Palestinian settlements. So Syria also plays a role because in the war of 1967, the, the Six-Day War, Israel took over their water resources. And in the case of Jordan, they, were, they received many threats because they were not able to construct hydroelectric projects. So obviously this was going to create uh, the lowering of the flow of the river. So this constitutes a problem for Israel. Well, the Prime Minister, Golda Meir, uh, formally threatened because they said that the water for Israel is fundamental for their survival. In the case of the Tigris and the Euphrates, there's a, there's a bigger actor that is Turkey that has a military stronghold in front of Syria and Egypt that, that although they are strong in the region, but they have their internal difficulties too. And of course, if they have less water, they, this affects the agriculture and the food supply for their people. This could also affect the river flow, the normal flow of this country. Well, the World Bank says that each person a year should have a thousand square square meters of water. Cubic meters. And there's another element that is the climate change. Climate change will affect the global geopolitics and especially in the places with less resources it will affect much more to the point that some rivers like the Nile there will be a lot of problems because there will be less rain and it will affect the flow so the international community like the World Bank or nations like China and Russia that have the technology need to put their products projects to improve the flow of the water. It is necessary to guarantee the flow of the water, but it's hard with, with the climate change. So do you think that the military power also plays a role in this? Like, for example, exa in the case of Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan? Well, in fact, I think uh, that Egypt has major air capacity. Of course, this would be a violation if they if they use this air airstrikes uh, to destroy any dam. This would go against international law because it creates massive damage on the population. Where you can see clearly uh, in the, the war reference, it's in, in, in India. When you see that there's a there's a separation of India and Pakistan in 1948, there was a there was a war of generated for the control of the Indi River. So Pakistan controls the north and India the south and at some point um, one of the two countries could close the access of the other country to water of course this had to be regulated and there was international law that was applied However, this confrontation between India and Pakistan was handled on the diplomatic field, and this was used as a model of how to create peace 
peace conditions and reach a, a peaceful resolution. Do you think that there is a, a crisis? Do you think there will be a crisis or there could be the possibility of reaching a great agreement for all three parties? Well, in the case of the Nile, it would be important to include all of the countries that are upriver because it goes through eight countries. And there was an agreement that was signed many years ago. And it was called the Initiative on the Basin of the River Nile. Egypt did not agree because, of course, it, it affected their quota of water a year. There is a ta there's something that to be said about the negotiation because there are two blocks, the blocks of the countries that are downriver and the ones that are upriver. Let's not forget that these agreements are from 1959. There's a need for a new diplomatic agreement. Maybe it could be framed by United Nations. In the case of the Tigris and Ephratis, it's, it's harder because because there's uh, Turkey is also involved that all, has some intervention of this and it could affect Iran and Syria when it comes to the control of the water resource. But this could open the door to, to a new negotiation. For example, if, if we see that Turkey is involved, getting involved with Syria, we see that it, it goes not only in the water resources, there's also this politics that are involved. In the case of Israel and, and West Bank, it's even stronger because Israel has not shown any type of interest in negotiating with Palestine. So they have no interest in negotiating. That is another politic, uh, politician, politi political problem. So in the future, these conflicts over water are a clear possibility. Uh, United Nations says that the the population is increasing. And of course, the water supply for all of these people is growing. Of all of the water, of all of the water in the world, 70% is salty water and only 30% is sweet water, is fresh water. So the percentage for, and most of, most of this 30 percent is used for, uh, for agriculture and hydroelectric dams, and the rest is for human use. Thank you very much for all of your input. Let's go to our final conclusions.